Hey guys, so we are at the start of another weekly reading vlog. So not only is this the start of a new weekly reading vlog, it is also the first day of July, so we are working with our brand new Book Hopley TBR, and it is the first day, or the first official day, of the Book Junkie Trials. It technically started three days ago for the Magi, and as the leader of the Magi, I probably should have started by now, but I just wanted to get one more book into my June TBR, which if you saw last week's vlog, you'll see that I did not manage to finish it. So that being said, I am still currently reading The Queens of Innislea by Tessa Grattan. This is a King Lear retelling. I'm not gonna go into it too much because I've been reading this book for so long that I feel like I have really beaten you guys about the head with the synopsis for this. So what I will do is if I manage to finish it this week, I will give you a synopsis as well as my thoughts so that I'm just not repeating myself all the damn time. So I have 160-ish pages left of this. I am hoping to chip away at it a couple of chapters a day, hopefully, until I have finished because I don't want it to cut into my reading for Bacopoli and the Book Junkie Trials too much because I have 11 books on my TBR that I have to read this month. So it's going to be difficult but I read 13 books in June. I had an excellent reading month and I'm pretty confident that I can do it. So as I said, I pretty much wasted the first three days of the Book Junkie Trials, so I've wasted my mage ability. So today I am cracking on with those. I have to say, oh, the, the weather just changed significantly and the the white balance went, oh well. So I have to say, oh, it's brightening up again now. Can we stop? So I have to say that for the first day of the week, the month of the Book Junkie Trials, I'm not doing too well so far. I have started Storm of Swords, Blood and Gold, which is the second part of Storm of Swords, which is the third book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. I'm only 20 pages into this. I have only managed to read one chapter so far. When I read George R. R. Martin books, I tend to read them in 50 page-ish chunks because I find that they're not necessarily very dense. They're a lot easier to read than I expected to going into this series for the first time but there's just a lot of information there's a lot of perspectives and I find that if I read them too quickly then I don't absorb as much information as I would like to especially as I am mainly reading the book series to get all of the lore that's missed out of the tv show so this is my fourth bookopoly role which is to read an adult fantasy this is also my fourth book for the book junkie trials and it is for the draconic isle which is to read a book with dragons in so my plan for this is that i'm just going to chip away at it until i have finished the first three books in my book junkie trials mage tbr and then i will concentrate on this until it is done. As for what Game of Thrones is about, it does feel pretty redundant. Telling you what it's about at this point, I'm sure you already know, but it is an adult epic high fantasy. It is multi-perspective. There are tons of different plot threads, but one of the main ones is that the king asks his best friend to come and be his most trusted advisor kind of thing. It's called the Hand of the King. And when his best friend, Ned Stark, gets to the seat of the kingdom he finds out that there may have been some foul play in the death of the last hand of the king and essentially his actions kick off a whole chain of events so it's really hard to give a synopsis for game of thrones because the main plot of the entire series only kicks off towards the middle and the end of the first book so you can't really say what it's actually about without spoiling a big event in the first book but that's the best I can do most of you guys will already know what it's about anyway so that's all I have for now because I'm making dinner at the moment my plans for the evening is I'm not sure if I'm going to read any more of this I have to edit most of last week's vlog I've only edited Monday and Tuesday so far which isn't as far ahead as I like to be with my editing on a Monday evening but I'm doing the thing again where I edit a day of footage read a chapter so I'm going to be reading this while I'm editing and then I may pick up my first book in the Mage TBR which will be my second Bookopoly book however it depends how long it takes me to edit because last week's vlog is going to be yet another long vlog which you guys seem to like it's it's weird I post regular size vlogs and they don't get as many views as the really long ones and I'm not even doing it intentionally they're just they just happen to be really long at the minute because I'm reading so many books in a week so I will be continuing on with this for tonight and then if I have any time I will pick up that other book and if I do I will let you know what it is etc either tonight or tomorrow.
Hey, so I'm gonna try and do a vlog update without my battery dying because I have just filmed 52 minutes of June wrap up and I'm not looking forward to editing that at all. Before I give you a reading update, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my plan of action for this month. I was feeling very overwhelmed yesterday morning when I was trying to work out like what I should be starting the month reading because obviously we have the book junkie trials which happens all month and I have five books on that TBR that I have to read and then I also have a nine book bookopoly tbr which includes four books or three books from the book junkie trials tbr but even with the overlap i still have to read 11 books this month and we have the reading rush at the end of the month so if i don't put any of the books that are already in my tbr into the reading rush then i have to read four books a week which is obviously a lot because there aren't too many books that are included in those 11 that are particularly small so i was feeling really overwhelmed so i put all of my tbr into the reading spreadsheet that i use i do that every month anyway but it's normally not a priority because I have an idea of what I'm going to be reading but um I had to figure some things out to make this TBR a little bit more doable I had to find three books that were on my Bacopoly TBR that weren't on my Book Junkie Trials TBR and push them to the end of the month to be included in the reading rush. Now that's extremely risky because it takes a little bit of pressure off me for the rest of the month. I only have to read three books each week in June but if I don't finish those books in the reading rush then we have a problem because I haven't read the books in July. But I managed to select three. So three of the books from my Bacopoly TBR that aren't on my Mage Path are going to be reserved for the reading rush. I won't tell you what they are because I will post a full TBR for the reading rush. I am going to aim for seven books but essentially I have already selected the three novels that will be the bulk of my TBR and then I'll fill in the rest of the challenges with smaller books or graphic novels or manga or something. I haven't finalized that yet because it is still a few weeks away and I find with the reading rush that the challenges are so vague that I struggle to find books to fill them. I have such a wide range to choose from whereas normally for a readathon prompt I'll have only like two or three books that would fit the challenge anyway. So after I did that I decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to prioritize my mage path TBR and try and get that done as quickly as possible and then proceed through the rest of the books on Bookopoly in order that aren't ones that I reserved for the reading rush or are part of the mage path for the book junkie trials. So there is a book on my mage path that's going to take me a while and that's the one that I showed you yesterday which is A Storm of Swords Blood and Gold. However I am on page 88 of this. I've read 60-ish pages today which is quite good for like a one day section of Storm of Swords for me. So I'm happy with that progress so far. I'm really loving this already. There are so many aspects that I love. There's a couple of things that have happened so far that I don't remember happening in the show and I'm assuming that they aren't actually going to happen because it would be kind of a big deal. So I'm um, I'm intrigued about that. I do have to go back through this because I haven't been annotating today. Funnily enough, Storm of Swords is a book that I'm like taking on the road with me and reading little chapters in between and on my lunch at work. So I need to go back through and annotate the things of note that I've picked up while I've been reading this. But I'm definitely enjoying it so far. There was a chapter with Jamie and Brienne that I really appreciated in here and I'm just loving Star Wars so much it is definitely the best book in the series so far so I'm on page 88 of this and like I said yesterday my plan with this is until I'm done I'm just gonna keep reading chunks every day until I finish this and this is gonna be one of the ones that I'm reading probably throughout all of this week hopefully if I carry on like this I'll finish it next week but we'll see so as this is my fourth book Hopley book and my fourth book Junkie Trials book before I can finish this I have to read my other three books on my mage path so the other book that I've started is the first book on the mage path and it is also my second bookopoly book to read an adult thriller and that is confessions by kine Minato for the book junkie trials this is for Oak grove to read a book that is gory gruesome or gritty before i started this i knew absolutely nothing about it apart from that it was an adult thriller and people say that it is really messed up this is a traveling book i'm reading this with a group of bookish friends from all over the world we are sending it around annotating it and then the person who started it off will keep this one i'm thinking that i'm probably going Going to be starting my own traveling book next month so when i've picked that one i think i'm going to do my bookopoly roles and then pick one of the prompts and choose like three books and then see which one the group wants to read the most so i will let you know which book that is i don't know if that's of any interest to you but i will let you know what that book is probably in august so i'm kind of assuming that this fits the prompt of being gory gruesome or gritty because of what i've heard about it but i don't actually know i did ask my friends and they said it would kind of fit in the gore so I'm, I'm hoping it works. So since I started reading this I do know a little bit more about the plot. This is an adult thriller that was translated from Japanese and one of the most unique things that I've found about it so far is that it is told in second person present 
perspective I want to say. The character who is narrating at the moment, I believe this is told in multiple perspectives throughout the book, but the first chapter is over 50 pages long and I am on page 40 so I haven't reached the end of the first chapter yet. I am assuming that it will change perspective for chapter 2 but I don't know. But the first perspective is a teacher. She works at a middle school in Japan. Her students are 13 I think. She is a single mother. I'm not sure how old her daughter is but she goes to daycare so she's quite young and a few months before the start of this novel her daughter did die. The arrangement that she had is that she would take her child to daycare and then she had somebody who looked after her until she had finished work but that person fell ill and our main character did not want to replace her because she was close with her child. In the time period that the lady that was looking after her was going to be ill she was just picking her up at four o'clock from her daycare and then bringing her to the school that she worked in until she was done with her work day and now one day she goes to collect her daughter from the area of the school that she works in that she leaves her in while she's working and she finds that she's gone. They search for her for ages and she is found floating in the school pool and she has sadly passed away. Like I said it's in second person present. I think it's present. I don't know. But it is as though we are the students in her class. So she is talking directly to the reader as though the reader is a student in her classroom which is a very interesting perspective and essentially she's telling this story about her child. There's lots of different tangents that contain a little bit of foreshadowing that I'm enjoying working out but she tells her class, I don't know what her purpose is, but she tells her class that two students, I'm not sure if they're in the class or just in the school, but she tells the class that two students were responsible for the death of her daughter even though it looks like a drowning it was a murder. So that's all I have from this so far that is probably all I will tell you about the plot of this because it is a thriller. I went into this blind and I wanted to go into this blind. I know some of you guys probably want a little bit of information about your thrillers before you pick them up but as this is quite a short book and I'm 40 pages in I think that is an adequate synopsis as I don't want to give anything away because I'm finding this super compelling as I went into it knowing absolutely nothing just picking up the little threads of what's going on. So as I'm annotating this I can't take this around with me even though it would be great because it's so short and it's also floppy which I love. So now that I film my wrap-up I don't have to edit it until tomorrow and I'm god I'm dreading the editing of my June wrap-up but I am going to get into bed now and read some of this. I think I, I'll get to at least the second chapter and then I may switch to the Queens of Innocence Leah just for a little bit just to make sure that I am still continuing with that book and then read this for the rest of the night. Honestly I think I could fly through this but I'm not sure if I should because the whole reason that the Queens of Innis Leah has taken me so long is because I'll pick up a book and be really compelled to finish it and then I'll think oh I'll read a few chapters of Queens of Innis Leah and then read another book alongside it and then the other book takes precedence. So I think I should maybe read a couple of chapters of the Queens of Innis Leah before I get sucked into this. But I'll probably read till the end of the chapter and then switch books for just a little while to make sure that I'm continuing on with that one. Hello, it is now about midday on Saturday and I've been doing some polyfiller. Hello, hello, we are on Thursday evening now. Wednesday was really busy again. I don't know what it is because Wednesdays traditionally aren't busy for me, but I think it's because I generally order my candle stock at the weekend. So it arrives on Tuesday or Wednesday and then obviously I'm using whatever it is for whatever I need it for. So yesterday was really busy. I did the unthinkable for me yesterday and I have postponed my June wrap up. So I didn't have a video go up today. It will be going up tomorrow instead, providing that I edit it because it is now 8.35 and I have just finished working on candles. I went to view a house earlier today. It could be the one but um, we'll have to wait and see. So I did that and then I worked on candles and now I'm just going to be updating you guys before I crack on with editing that enormous wrap up. So for a reading update, it's Thursday and I haven't finished a book yet. I'm getting a little bit stressed about it but let's be real I'm stressed about everything right now. But I am making good progress in Storm of Swords part 2. I'm on page 166. All I'm gonna say about where I'm up to is Jamie Lannister sends his regards and if you know you know and if you don't you don't but definitely high stakes lots of action really enjoying this and then the other book I was reading is Confessions by Kane Minato 
I am on page 154 of 230 ish of this so ideally I would like to finish this tonight hopefully I can get my wrap up done in a reasonable amount of time I'm really tired at the minute I was tired last night as well and I'm not exactly sure what it is I might be coming down with a little something because the first signs of illness in me is that I start to sleep a hell of a lot so I have been feeling quite tired but I am hoping to get that wrap up done I have around 30 minutes of footage left to edit like I'm halfway through and I still have 30 minutes left to edit so that's that's an indication of how long that was if you have not seen it I'm really enjoying this like people have said it is very messed up there are a couple of problems that I have with it but seeing as I am so close to the end and I will be giving you full thoughts on this probably tomorrow I will save my thoughts on this but it is really compelling each chapter is told from a different perspective and you're not really told who the perspective is until you kind of work it out for yourself and I don't know where the story is going because I thought it would be about how this little girl died but we know how she died right at the beginning and then all this other stuff is happening. So aside from that I have a really heavy parcel that arrived today. I think this is from Gavin. I've already shouted at him for buying me something because essentially what happened is that yesterday he went to see Cody and I said that he was cancelled because um, how dare he go see Cody before he sees me. <laughs> So I was, I was only joking, I was only playing, I wasn't being serious, but um, he said he'd bought me a little something to make up for it, and yeah, he did. Oh my god, this is enormous. He's such a dick. He bought me Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin in this collection that he insists that I have. So let's crack it open. Gavin, stop it. You told me earlier about the state of your bank account. So stop it. So at this point you may have seen these editions before. They come in a slip case. We have a very nice spine on them. I have noticed that on each individual book this symbol on the spine is different which is exciting. My favourite part is that the map is on the covers and we have gold edges. I wonder what the end papers are in this one. Oh okay so we got this one and we have oh Melisandre. On that one so thank you so much Gavin even though you shouldn't have done this I was only playing with you I love you a lot you would never be cancelled unless you really upset me but yeah thank you so much Gav um, I'm having a little bit of a stress overload at the minute so little things like this really make my day so I'm not sure what to do about this actually because as you guys know I don't even know what I've done with it I'm currently reading Star Wars Sword so I could switch to this edition but I have been taking this to work and this would be difficult to take to work because it's enormous and really heavy but uh yeah I might have a flick through this one just just for the hell of it so that is all i have for you now that is a reasonably short update for me by now you probably know i don't know if i've mentioned it in this vlog but cody will be here this weekend so i think my plans for reading is to finish confessions tonight carry on with this carry on with the queens of innis Lear and bits read one full book tomorrow the second book on my mage tbr tomorrow and then start another book for over the weekend i don't know what me and cody are doing this weekend so i don't know if i'll have time to read but i guess we'll see hey guys this is just a very quick little update to say well it's not to say but i'll give you a reading update while i'm here i didn't manage to finish confessions last night so i am up to page 204 i have 30 pages left of this i was gonna say 100 we'll finish this tonight but maybe not and then storm of swords i'm on page 220 so i've made i'm up to here I've made a decent dent in this more than I thought I would this week so I'm really happy with how much I've managed to read of this this week and hopefully I'll be able to finish it next week if I read another 220 pages I'll have 140 ish left so in the next couple of weeks this will be done but I am actually here to tell you that in around 20 minutes I'm going to go pick up Cody and then Cody will be here we're having the most fun time tonight we're gonna go get some chicken and um do not a lot. I just thought I'd let you know that I would be going to collect her soon so you may see her around. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Am I nervous? I might be a little bit nervous. I don't do well with people. People aren't my people animals are my people but I am very excited and I'm also very excited for chicken because I'm always excited for chicken so I'm gonna go now because I might try and read a little bit of confessions before I go to collect her and I'll check in with you guys maybe later on tonight. Hey 
Hey guys. So we have Cody here today. She does exist. I know I said yesterday that you might see her and you didn't, but she <laughs> she is here. She does exist. Surprise and appearance. We have been shopping in Beverly today and we got some books from the charity shops, mm -hmm. which is exciting. Mm -hmm. So who's going first? You go first. You've got the more exciting ones, I think. And yeah, and they're all pretty much the same. Yeah. So um, I found some pretty good stuff, but I don't know when I'll be reading them. But they're very never. pretty. <laughs> Maybe never, but um, you'll see why you'll see why I bought them. So the first one that I got is Middle March by George Eliot in the English what are they called? Penguin English Library? Peng is Penguin that right? is it the Penguin English Library editions? I collect them and I don't even know. <laughs> so I got Middle March. I also got the five I don't even know what these are called. The Five Orange Pips and Other Cases and The Adventures of the Engineer's Thumb and Other Cases. So these two are by Arthur Conan Doyle and George Eliot, obviously, because I said that. And I've been collecting these classics for a while. I don't read a whole bunch of classics like I do. I probably want to read them all eventually, but will I? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, so I am slowly building up this collection. This is a collection of classics that I want to buy. And I found these in three different shops. Like, they weren't even together. And I never, ever find these because everybody is collecting them. So um, that was pretty cool. You did really well. I know, you I'm like so them happy. so quick, you were like, mine. They have, like, they have such distinctive spines. Like, I'm just trained because I look for them everywhere. Yeah. Cool, so what pretty do you do good, Pretty good haul. Well, mine's a bit less exciting. Well, I don't know, actually. Some of you might be a bit more excited. And I'm looking at the viewfinder and not the lens. I apologise. I'm not used to fancy I think equipment. I was looking at the um, viewfinder, actually. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so I got two. One of them I have already read, and it's The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, Mabe. Because I read this, and I love this. I think this is my favourite Neil Gaiman. Have you no, read I wanna this? Re no, I want to read it. It's very magical realist. Mm. But it's kind of like messed up as well. Like, is it the one where he goes to like a big house and then there's mm -hmm. a lake and then they go on a boat? Do they go on a boat? I don't know if they can't remember if they go on a boat. I don't think so. Does it have another cover that's like. Oh, it's like a. Below. Yeah, the other cover is like a boy in the ocean. He's like reaching down. Yeah. Like in the lake. Yeah. It is the same book yeah. that I'm thinking about, but. Yeah, but I gave this five stars. My favourite Neil Gaiman. I didn't actually have a copy because I took the first one out of the library and I've been looking for one with a nice cover and you spotted this. I did. She's just amazing. Even though I've got contact lenses and I can't actually see anything. But no, apparently, but like, I, I just need to go book shopping with you all the time because she like spots this stuff. That's why you're so quick. I do this show a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then this is completely influenced by Becca. Everyone's gonna come. I at me. decided that I should probably see what the hype is with this because I've only read the first two books in the series and I didn't like them. But then you've told me and everybody's told me that the series gets better. So I took the plunge. And I got Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas, which is the third book in the Throne of Glass series. And I want this because I want to know who my mom is. Yeah, she is a badass bitch. And also, what's the other guy? Rowan. Rowan, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was going to say Ronan because you keep I've been keep saying Ronan as in like, life is a roller coaster, Ronan yeah. Keaton. Um, but yeah, I got this because uh, Becca loves it. I know you're nervous for me to read it. Yeah, I am. I'm like, because I'm joking. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm trash. For Sarah J Maas, so like, yeah. I just like everything. But I understand that some people don't. So like, it doesn't offend me if you don't like her. But um, I yeah. do. But I'm also biased because I like yeah. her that much. Yeah, I just want to see what the hype is with it. Even if I don't love it, I just kind of want to know who these characters are that get referenced all the time. Like, I have FOMO for the series. Not spoilers, but at the end of the series, like, Manon is one of the reasons for the most emotional moment in the entire Yeah, it broke last you, book right? It broke you, you cried. I sobbed, I sobbed. Yeah. And I don't cry at books. I know. And I was, like, sobbing. So, let's Let's see if this series makes me cry because I don't usually cry at books either. Hmm. So I am taking the plunge and I got Air of Fire. Um, I don't know when the hell I'm going to read it. Oh, God knows. But I will probably be messaging you as I do. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited about it. So, yeah. That's what I got as my little haul. Probably not as exciting as yours, but I don't know. This is quite exciting that I'm actually going to continue with this series because... Didn't you have them and unhaul them? Yeah, I unhauled the first two books. Oh, I thought you had the, like, more of them. No, no, no. Them. I was looking for this one in a charity shop and then... And I was just like, oh, I don't know if I'll ever continue. And then I saw it today and I was like, well, since I'm with you. You are with um, Sarah J Maas' number one stand. Trash. And um, if I don't like it, I can put it up my ass, as Cindy says. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah J Maas up my Sarah J ass. So yeah, that's quite exciting. My headband's moving. <laughs> Go back. It's like, oh yeah, yeah we're, we're twinning. twinning as well. Yeah. We have the same headbands. We were also twinning yesterday. Sweet. Oh yeah, then jackets. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the haul. Mm-hmm. And what else have we done? We haven't really done much, have we? went to Starbucks. Yeah. Had some cake. Yeah. I'm just chilling at Becca's now. Got some foundation. Mm -hmm. That's what's mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. Not read anything today. <laughs> I have, and I'll come back and tell yes. you about it. Yes. I finished a book. Mm-hmm. And I kind of want to read it now. I'll do that later. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. When Cody's here, not here. Yeah. And Sorry. then we can talk about how much we hate her as well. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Looking forward to seeing that in your next week's vlog. <laughs> I'll put it as unlisted and just send it to the like the exclusive Becca fan club. So Gav. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Rachel. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna go and probably do not a lot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we'll well I will, I don't know if Cody will, but I will check in with you later. Hey guys, so it has just pretty much just turned Sunday afternoon. It is midday. So as I said yesterday on Friday night? Was it Friday? No, it was yesterday morning. I finished Confessions by Kane Minato. Now, I can't really tell you anything else about what this is about because it is a thriller and the best thing about this book is the plot twist. When people say it's really fucked up, it is really fucked up. However, what I will say about this is that when people say that things are really fucked up, I expect them to be like level 5,000 and this was probably like level 1,000. Like it's really fucked up, but my mind literally goes to the most dramatic things that I can think of. So the plot twist just came out of nowhere and it was really cool like unraveling those and finding out what was going on. The main plot line, like I said, is that this teacher is telling a story and she says that she knows that two children killed them. Her daughter she's not going to go to the police and she exacts her own revenge so we have lots of different perspectives in here we have perspectives of students in the class and we also have perspectives of some people outside like one of the students mothers and everybody's a little bit twisted and everybody has their own take on things i haven't rated this on goodreads yet i've just filmed and finished editing my stats video so i couldn't put anything into my spreadsheet or change goodreads until i'd got all of the screenshots that i needed to put into that video but i was really torn between three and four stars on this because i do think it was good i really enjoyed the plot twist in it it was really repetitive so every time we'd have a new perspective they'd recount the death of the little girl and when she was murdered and obviously we're getting a new perspective on it every time but at the same time the dialogue is just pulled again so you'd have like a full page that's just the exact same scene but just from somebody else's perspective perspective and all the dialogue would be kept in instead of skipping over the parts that we already knew all of the dialogue and everything that was happening was kept in so like bits like that was re were really repetitive the other thing that kind of bugged me about this is that the students are supposed to be 13 it is a middle school and i think it's mentioned multiple times that these particular kids in this class are 13 they do not behave like 13 year olds like one of them's like i went into my laboratory and tried to think of a better invention and i'm like right okay there's another one who's like i thought this was a bit suspicious so i got these items from the classroom and i decided to test them with some chemicals i had lying around and obviously i can't speak for what children are like in japan i've never been to japan this is probably the most japanese book i've ever read because aside from haruki murakami i think the only translated japanese book that i've read that was translated from japanese is the beast player and that is a young adult story but i feel like this does contain a lot of aspects of japanese culture that is taken out of things that are Americanized and also that isn't present in stories written by Eastern American authors or Japanese American authors. I don't know what I'm trying to say. This contains a lot of Japanese culture, like things that I only know in passing about Japanese culture that we don't traditionally see in media. So I can't say specifically what 13 year olds in Japan are actually like. They just didn't feel like children to me. So three stars for this, but I would definitely recommend it if you like messed up stories. It is only short, it's 234 pages and the plot twists are wild and I really enjoyed those aspects of it. And every twist was like, oh my God. So this is also the traveling book so i will be sending this on to ryan next like my best friend ryan but i think i'm going to keep it until the middle of the month because i will probably be doing a mid-month wrap-up so i'll keep it for that video and then i will post it on to him for bookopoly this was my second role to read a mystery or a thriller and for the book junkie trials this is my first book on the mage path which is to read a book that is gory gruesome or gritty i would say that this is gritty and gruesome it's not really gory i don't think there's no hacking or slashing in it or copious amounts of blood spurting everywhere but some of the twists are a bit like oh that's that's nasty and obviously you have the murder of a child and like the sadistic minds that went that were behind this murder which i guess would make it a little bit gritty so it does count so as i finished confessions i picked up children of the whales volume three by abby umida i am halfway through this at the moment like i would have finished this in one sitting but obviously cody's here this weekend so i haven't been reading it as much as i usually would this is not on my bookopoly tbr it is exclusively on my book junkie trials mage tbr and this is for the second prompt which is old pirate cove and the prompt for that is to read a book that takes place at least in part on the sea now this is kind of a cheat it isn't really because it does take place on the sea but in this book the sea is made of sand so it's not like a traditional like water sea 
but it does take place on the sea because it's called the Sea of Sand. So you guys may know what this is about. I have been reading the series for a while. I read pretty much one volume a month it's turning out as. And this follows a 14 year old boy called Chakro who is the archivist on the Mud Whale which is an island that floats in the Sea of Sand. They don't know anything of the outside world. They only know about their community. And as Chakro is a archivist, he is the responsible for documenting the things that happen on the Mud Whale. I find it really hard to talk about this series because the art in this is absolutely beautiful and that is definitely why I started reading this series and it's just a nice fantasy you know they live on this island there's a mystery about why they're there and what the rest of society is like but then there's a huge plot twist at the end of the first volume that kicks off the chain of events that goes through at least where I'm up to in this series but I can't really tell you what that is because it spoils the entire first volume. So I do find it difficult to talk about, but I do really like this. I have been rating these volumes five stars. I do prefer orange to these, so I'm not sure if they would be a four star read for me, but with manga, I'm very much a newbie. I've read this series, Orange Volume 1, and Goyo by Junji Ito, and that is all the manga I've read. So don't take my ratings on manga too seriously because I'm still working out what is really enjoyable for me for manga and what I don't really like so my ratings are not as accurate as they are when I rate things like fantasy. So I'm gonna head off now because it is quarter past 12. I'm off to pick up Cody. She is leaving at about three. Curtis is going out to a gig for his friend's band in a pub but because Cody's leaving at three we're just gonna come back here and chill for a bit so you may see her, you may not. I have had like a really great weekend with her and I'm considering like stuffing her in the drawer under my bed so she can't leave. But um, yeah, I've had a really great weekend with Cody. So I'm sad that she'll be leaving, but I'm gonna go make the most of the time that we have left. Hey, so Cody has left us. She's gone back to her mum's and I'm all alone. Even Curtis has left me and I'm sad about it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to upload my video that's going up today and then I'm gonna get some reading done. I'm going to finish Children of Wales. I'm gonna start my next book and I'm gonna fill you all in on what I'm reading until I have read enough to fill the hole in my soul. Hey guys, so we're heading on for around 5 p.m. now. I have been out in the garden just getting a little bit of sun because I've realized that because I've been quite busy recently, I haven't been taking advantage of the fact that the weather's actually been pretty nice. I mean, sometimes it's really cloudy and hot, but at the moment it is pretty sunny, but not so hot that I have to like slather the <laughs> sun lotion on before I can get out there. So I went out while I finished the last just over a quarter I think I had left of Children of Worlds volume three. I have given this one three stars and I'm not sure if it's because I've read Orange recently and Orange is like my favourite book of the year and a manga or whether it was just that this volume wasn't quite as good as the first two. I felt like there was a lot of build up to something at the beginning of this and then the last bit was really good when the actual thing was happening but the build up just I wasn't too interested in it. They were preparing for something but it just wasn't capturing my attention as much and I don't think it was building as much emotion as I have felt previously in the first two volumes. However, the character on the cover of this one, he's called Uni or Oni. He is my favourite character and he reminds me a lot of Vincent from Final Fantasy VII. So he has a lot of badass moments in this. All of his moments are badass and I love him. So I did appreciate those but I gave this four stars like I said yesterday or was it this morning? I think it was this morning. Don't take my manga reviews and ratings too seriously because I'm still kind of figuring out what we're doing here with these. So that completes all Pirate Cove for the Mage Path for the Book Junkie Trials. I need to actually go mark on that I've done that. I'm glad that I said that because then I remembered. So this one's done which means that I'm now starting a new book. I said that I wanted to read three books this week. Obviously I've been a bit busy and then Cody was here all weekend and we didn't do much reading. I won't be finishing this tonight because even though I think it'll be a quick read it's also pretty chunky but I'll be reading my third book for the Book Junkie Trials which is Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jake Kristoff. I have been excited to read this for a long time, like you guys know. I've been putting it off because I think that I'm gonna love it. This is also in one of my five star prediction videos. I love Jay Kristoff, I absolutely adore that man. So definitely high hopes for this one. And once again, it matches my outfit because that is how that is how I do vlogs apparently. I just match my outfits to my book covers. So for the book Junkie Trials, this fulfills the third prompt which is Glimmer to read a book that is either colourful or beautiful. I picked this one even though it has got a very colourful cover so it would fit for that. But I picked it because it's beautiful inside and out because of the mixed media. I am going to see if I can get an audiobook for this to listen along to but we'll see if I find one. I'm not sure if that's going to work out for me because I obviously want to read this physically because of the mixed media aspect but I know that you guys love the audiobook. I'm just worried that I'll be a little little bit impatient if I'm doing both at the same time and I don't want to do either or because I want to experience both and yeah I'm wondering if the um if the audiobook would be a little bit too slow for me 
but I wouldn't speed it up because I don't speed up audiobooks like I like things to be narrated or told at the pace that they're supposed to be so we'll see what I do about that but I am going to be starting this one very soon this is my next book and it's not on my book copy TBR I don't know much about this apart from that it's a young adult sci-fi it's told in mixed media and it is about a boy and a girl who have just broken up when the planet is destroyed they both escape but in different ways I think they're on different ships and that is all I know about this one so I'm very excited to start this one I will be doing this very soon I am going to make just a few candles I'm not going to be working too much today because I cleared the whole weekend and I'm enjoying myself for once so I am going to go make a few candles probably make some dinner because I've hardly eaten all day and then I'm going to crack on with this one hey so I'm just editing the vlog and it occurred to me that I haven't actually wrapped it up yet like I've only edited Monday and Tuesday so I'm not like far enough that I need to insert this clip but it is 11 it's just past 11 and curtis is still out i don't know if i said he was out earlier but he's still out and when he comes home he has to do the dishes because um i i was tired i was very sleepy i've been very sleepy today up until i ate and then i felt a bit better but i asked if he'd do the dishes when he got in and he said yeah so he has to do that and then he's pretty much gonna want to collapse in bed so i always make the mistake of saying that i'll come back and check in and then he comes home and i don't i end up going to sleep when i left you i said i was gonna start illuminate i have i am also listening to the audiobook so i'm on page i haven't got a bookmark in this yet i've been using the receipt from when I bought it. I'm on page 40 of 599 of this. It's really big and I knew it was big. So it's not like that's a shock. It's just, wow. Big book, it's bigger than you would expect a book to be. I suppose if you condensed all the text and took out all the images, it wouldn't be that big. But yeah, it's, it's a chunky one. So I'm really enjoying this so far. The plot is still as it stands. I don't know anything else about the plot. It is a little bit confusing starting off going into it. Not really being used to the mixed media, but after say 10 pages, I was pretty much in the flow of it. It does take a little bit of extra brain power to connect what's going on because you have like ship schematics and emails and instant messages and dossier files. I don't know who this narrator is who's doing the, what are they called? It's called briefing notes yeah they're called briefing notes so i don't know who the narrator is because this is supposed to read like a dossier it's the illuminate files so it's a collection of files that has been sent to somebody from somebody else and like i said it starts off with the destruction of this planet and i thought that this was from the main characters katie and ezra and i believe that the characters change in every book so i thought it was the host of main characters had compiled this and we're sending it to somebody to get revenge or like justice to what happened to the planet. But the briefing notes keep saying that Katie and Ezra are the subject. So they're the ones that these files are based on. So this isn't a collection of files of evidence of who blew up the planet. It's a collection of files to do with those two. And I don't know why I didn't know that. So I'm intrigued as to who the narrator is. And aren't we always when we read a J. Kristoff book? Although I do think that I know who the um, the narrator for Nevernight is. I'm just waiting for confirmation. It should come in Dark Dawn, but I'm pretty sure I know who it is, which is exciting. Definitely listening to the audiobook while reading it was a good show. The only thing is that, like I said earlier, I don't like to speed up my audiobook i like to listen to them at the speed that they're at but i read physically so much faster but because of the nature of this mixed media i feel like i will definitely get more out of the story if i listen to the audiobook as well but i've listened to like an hour of the audiobook and i'm only 40 pages in and i'm like i kind of want to read faster than that so whether i stick with the audiobook will be like a question i may have to like read this for an hour before bed every night but then that's going to take me 11 days I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do, but I am enjoying both the audiobook and the physical copy of this. What I will say is that I would not advise just listening to the audiobook because I'll show you a page. This isn't a spoiler because it's like the third file that's included or something. So essentially, Katie and Ezra are evacuated onto these ships and there's some problems with the ships and you have like um, a report of what's happened to the ship. Then you also get these ship schematics, which obviously somebody has drawn these and you have like the charts and stuff and like the information in here is not substantial it's just like the make model of the ships and stuff and what fighters they have and their capacities but the audiobook just skips like all of these pages because there's one there as well so i would definitely recommend like reading this alongside the audiobook if you do want to go the audiobook route but aside from that like i'm having a great time with this so i've only edited monday and tuesday of the vlog so far but i do that thing don't i where i edit today and read a chapter and i thought i should probably read a chapter of the queen of innes leo while i'm editing which this seems to be my editing book which is interesting i seem to always pick it up when i'm editing my vlog and i'm doing in this like edit 
chapter thing. So I'm going to be carrying on with this. I'm currently on page 411 of this. So I have read, wow, I've read like 20 pages this week. Not going well with this. I'm um, gonna read a chapter of this and head back into my editing, but I'm going to leave you guys here and I'll, um, I'll start my next vlog tomorrow next week should be interesting i think we're having a sh two vlogs next week a short one and a weekend vlog so i want to cram a whole ton of reading into the weekend so we'll see what footage i have and see what i'm doing about that but i have had like i've had a really great week the first part of the week was kind of st well actually the first two days were really chill and then wednesday thursday friday or like wednesday thursday half of friday were really stressful and then i really like i had a great time with cody and cody kept joking and saying that she was coming here to make me stop doing stuff because she knows that i'm like super productive like overly productive like i should not do as many things as i do do in a day so she said that she was coming here to make me like chill the fuck out and to be fair it worked like i feel great i was falling asleep earlier like i was really damn tired when i was making dinner but aside from that like i feel so much less stressed than i normally do on a weekend and i've still managed to be really productive like i've still filmed and edited a video i'm still editing my vlog right now i finished two books over the weekend and i've made 15 candles today so I've still been really productive. There's nothing right now that I think, oh, I should have been doing that this weekend. But guaranteed, I would have been doing a shit ton of stuff this weekend and would have been really stressed about it. And I don't know how I have managed to be productive in the little time I've had in between seeing Cody because she went home at like 1am on Friday night and then I was with her all day on Saturday and for a few hours this afternoon before she left. So I don't know how I've managed to be productive and do the things that I would normally do in a weekend and spend so much time doing not a lot with Cody. So thank you very much, Cody. Um, I think we're gonna have to schedule this monthly. You're gonna have to come here and force me to chill out on a monthly basis. So um, we'll organize that. But yeah, thank you so much for making me chill the fuck out, essentially. So I'm gonna go now. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. And I will see you next week, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no